Ligaments found in the abdomen help to anchor organs so that they don't move around too freely in the abdominal cavity. For the liver, we will learn about ligaments that connect to the diaphragm, abdominal wall, stomach, and the portal triad structures. There are eight ligaments to know for anatomy, some of which will play a vital role as liver landmarks on ultrasound. As we have learned prior, some of the abdominal organs are covered in a sheath of peritoneum. As the visceral and parietal peritoneum folds back on itself, it creates thicker areas or ligaments. These ligaments hold the organs in place to one another and the abdominal wall. You'll find many of the ligaments are named for the two organs that they connect. Some are based on shape and some really don't follow either of these patterns, which is the case for a few of the liver ligaments. There are eight liver ligaments to identify. The first ligament is the coronary ligament, and we'll start with this anterior view. The coronary ligament connects the liver to the diaphragm and it has two layers, the anterior and posterior layer. The anterior layer is made up of parietal peritoneum underneath the diaphragm, and the posterior layer is peritoneum that connects the lower margin of the bare area to the right adrenal gland and kidney. The anterior layer is continuous with the falciform ligament and the posterior layers connect into the right and left triangular ligaments. This image shows us the anterior view of the coronary ligament running underneath the diaphragm and how it connects to the falciform ligament. This image shows us the inferior view of the liver where we can see the coronary ligament arising from the inferior portion of the bare area and connecting to the right triangular ligament. The last image of the coronary ligaments shows the anterior and posterior portions and how they connect to the right and left triangular ligaments. Remember that the coronary ligaments attach to the diaphragm and then surround the bare area. The second ligament is the falciform ligament. The falciform ligament is a broad and thin and connects to the liver from the anterior abdominal wall. It arises superiorly from the coronary ligament and it ends inferiorly at the ligamentum teres. Only on the anterior surface on the liver, it anatomically divides the right and left lobes. The superior view shows how the falciform ligament is a continuation of the coronary ligament and wraps from superior to anterior. The third and fourth ligaments are the triangular ligaments. The right and left triangular ligaments are named for their shape and location. They sit on opposite ends of the coronary ligament and attach the liver to the diaphragm. The right triangular ligament sits near the bare area of the liver, and the left triangular ligament is at the superior border of the left lobe, anterior to the esophagus. The inferior view of the liver exhibits the right triangular ligament arising from the coronary ligament at the bare area. The posterior view of the liver shows both the left and right triangular ligaments, the left coming from the coronary ligaments on the superior edge of the left lobe, and again the right triangular ligament near the bare area. The fifth ligament is the ligamentum teres. The ligamentum teres is also known as the round ligament. Its composition is more that of a fibrous cord and it's a remnant of what used to be the left umbilical vein. The ligamentum teres extends from the belly button to a notch on the anterior surface of the liver and then travels under the liver and posteriorly to join to the ligamentum venosum. This image shows the bulkier free portion of the ligamentum teres on the anterior portion of the liver. The inferior view of the liver shows how the ligamentum teres wraps underneath and then travels posteriorly 
to meet up with the ligamentum venosum. A final view of the ligamentum teres on the posterior side shows us the ligamentum teres joining to that ligamentum venosum, which is shown in green. The sixth ligament is the ligamentum venosum. The ligamentum venosum is a continuation of the ligamentum teres on the superior posterior portion of the liver. Once it was called the ductus venosus, which is a vein used in fetal circulation, its obliteration causes the ligament to form. The ligament runs through a fissure or groove called the left intersegmental fissure and connects to the left portal vein. The lesser omentum also connects to this fissure and ligament. This inferior view of the liver shows us how the ligamentum teres wraps around the inferior liver and continues to the ligamentum venosum on the superior portion. The posterior view of the liver again shows the ligamentum venosum on the superior portion, noting where the lesser omentum, also known as the gastrohepatic ligament, attaches. The seventh ligament is the gastrohepatic ligament. The gastrohepatic ligament, also known as the lesser omentum, is composed of two folds of the visceral peritoneum. It continues from the ligamentum venosum, traveling inferiorly to the lesser curvature of the stomach and duodenum. This anterior view of the abdomen shows the gastrohepatic ligament coming from the posterior liver and connecting to the small or lesser curve of the stomach. Another view of the gastrohepatic ligament can be seen in this transverse view. The ligament can be seen in cross-section, leaving the liver and connecting to the stomach. The eighth and final ligament that you will need to know is the hepatoduodenal ligament. The hepatoduodenal ligament extends from the portahepatis to the edge of the gastrohepatic ligament and the duodenum. This ligament surrounds the portal triad, which is a set of vessels and a duct that travel together in the liver. The hepatoduodenal ligament forms the anterior border of the epiploic foramen, which is also known as the foramen of Winslow. This foramen serves as the only connection between the lesser sac and the rest of the peritoneum. Using the same anterior view of the abdomen, the hepatoduodenal ligament can be seen coursing laterally to the gastrohepatic ligament. This image shows a cutout of the ligament to show the portal triad coursing within. Again, in this transverse view, the hepatoduodenal ligament can be seen with the portal triad within. The foramen of Winslow is also visible. Zooming in on this diagram shows us again that hepatoduodenal ligament running anterior to the epiploic foramen, which is the entrance to the lesser sac. 